Armored Core Lore, Double Heart, and the Armored Core novel, Brave New World. If this report was simply to talk about the game version of this Armored Core known as Double Heart, it would be a very short one. As for many, they only know of this Armored Core thanks to its appearance in Silent Line Portable. This red and white Armored Core is nothing special, as even with its name spelled wrong, many will simply defeat the AC and move on. However, this special Armored Core has more meaning, as its history does not come from any of the games, but a novel entitled Armored Core A Brave New World. Written by Junuchi Kamito, this 375 page novel will tell the story of Double Heart's pilot, Mizuki Karazumiyama, and her operator, Sizia Milky, who are raised by a veteran raven by the name of Thirteen, with Mizuki losing her parents in the Japan War, while Milky being his own daughter. I won't cover all the points of the story as I admit my lack of understanding of the Japanese language is leaving me no choice but to Google Translate the whole book, with varying results. I am, however, going to leave a Google Drive link to my Google Translation of the book for all of you to read, and hopefully get an understanding of the book should I fail to cover any points here. For now, the important factors of the story. We start with that 13 as part of a mercenary group named the Cryptoton is killed off on a mission by a Black AC. Wanting to find out more about this and wanting to be able to make a living while doing so, Mizuki and Milky become mercenaries and start to fight in the arena to make a living. During this time, a friend of Thirteen's named Azuma comes to the two girls, telling them he made a promise to Thirteen, that should anything happen to Thirteen, he would help them and become the mechanic to Mizuki's armoured core, Victoria. Trust is not the first thing to build between the pair, however, after some more matches, the three start to get along and learn of the number one ranker of the era named Nine Pilots a Black Armoured Core, one that is very similar to the one who shot down Thirteen. Nine and Mizuki meet a couple of times outside of the arena in the Tokyo Frontier area, where the two chat and Nine mentions how he does not feel human anymore. What follows is a series of battles between Victoria and other ranking armoured cores, along with a side story that talks about other ravens like Shinza, Zira, Karl, and Tiffin, who all shall play a part in the story later on. So now the battle goes on until with Mizuki learning that Azuma has an incurable disease that he should be in the hospital for. However, he keeps on working to improve Victoria, building up a friendly relationship with both Mizuki and Milky, as finally Mizuki gets to battle Nine in the arena. Nine's death, however, opens up information about the Dracone Project, and how an AI is taking the will of dead ravens and putting them into artificial bodies and armoured cores to carry out its own will. We learn a lot of ravens have already become part of this AI project to create an immortal army, a next generation of armoured cores. This leads to Mizuki, Milky, and Azuma to head from Tokyo to the Aqua Colosseum, where Milky and Mizuki are starting to wonder about this project, only to come to find out in the arena is a pilot who looks just like their father slash mentor in a top ranking A scene named Mavos. From here, the two girls and Azuma battle their way through the arena, while we the reader get to see this AI program in action when Mavos kills another pilot named Shinza, allowing us to witness the program in action and the one behind it, Project Zero, as well as all the mass figures with numbers carved into their masks. It is then shown within the next few pages that the AI bodies do keep the memories in some will, as after battling more, it comes to the point where Mizuki and Milky want a life after all this, and talk with Azuma about going to college with all their winnings. However, before the battle between Mizuki and this fake 13, Milky and the fake 13 would meet and talk more about the Dracoin project, as the fake 13 explains to Milky, his daughter, that he is not real, and he only wants to finally rest, not be a puppet to an AI that is stationed within the Colosseum. The pair share a moment within a run-down fairground, where the fake 13 buys her a silver balloon and popcorn, something he did with Milky while she was growing up. The pair hug one last time, before she heads back to the hotel where the three are staying. All this time, the two girls have been struggling to wonder if they can fight their father slash mentor. However, after they talk about this meeting and the project, they see this man is not their father, and the only way to stop all this which would be destroy this AC and expose the project to the world. What follows is hours before the match, Azuma installs a new generator on Victoria unlike any before, and he and Mizuki, who has been falling for Azuma all this time with her expressing her sadness about her mentor's death and working with him on her AC. He tells her he is going back to the hospital as he needs to get some rest, and he knows she can put an end to all this. It's here the pair share a kiss before he leaves, without saying goodbye leading to Mizuki and Milky having to fight their fake father in the arena on their own, which is closed off and tickets sold to the highest bidders, 
who turn out to be corporation leaders. While a battle between Mizuki and Marvos is going on, Azuma does not go to the hospital. Instead, sneaking under the facility, he manages to find the main source of power for Project Zero, the A behind the Dragon plan, and uses ECM to not destroy it, but allow the wills of the other Ravens to mix with it, allowing for the AI to become normal, instead of seeking out to create this immortal army. This leads to a scene I admit I'm not sure of myself, best shown in this picture, as the AI bodies inside the project attack Project Zero, his sitting on a throne, keeping him there as the EMC damages him, only for it to be seen that Project Zero has the face of Azuma. With this, the tough battling skills of Marvos become weakened, as it seems he needed to be connected to Project Zero to perform better than his original self. As such, he is killed by Mizuki, who then shoots a hole in the arena roof, which alerts the governments who start to investigate the arena and find all about Project Zero and these AI pilots. What follows next is a chapter named Brave New World, which explains that this project turned out to be the work of the corporations of the past, who built this AI to create the new generation of war machines. However, this is very much glossed over, as a black AC and an army of machines named Leafs and Sisters start to destroy the world with ravens from all over the world and the world's national army having to try and fight back. This again breaks off into a few more pages about characters like Zera and Carl being on the front lines battling against this army of foes. Humanity has no hope against them, as such they just have to keep going. It's also during this time Mizuki is battered badly when this army attacks her college and she ends up in the floating ship hospital in critical care, unable to speak or even open her eyes. This is where Milky and Gamos, a friend of Milky and fellow mercenary, is taken in by the military as a young man named Min Mina, who works for the Southern Defense Bureau, is tasked with questioning Milky about the past encounters with Project Zero and these AI pilots, before he requests to be allowed to pilot Victoria, as the AC is the only one to have beaten an AI pilot. This again leads to Minam learning about the AC and how it seems to have a will of its own, and how he could feel the love Azuma had for Mizuki in it. While this made him not as an effective pilot of the craft, battles across the world would be pushing ACs and the military to their limit, with once again the appearance of Nine's AC Nor on the battlefield again, only while other ACs struggled, a black painted Victoria comes to their rescue before leaving. This black Victoria is seen much more across the battlefield, and even crosses paths with the real Victoria once during a battle, but it only lasts 30 seconds. In truth, it's later during a battle with Zira, Carol and Tiffin that another Black AC comes to the fight, and after battling the three and almost destroying Azira, the Black AC sends her Morse code, signaling itself as her father, Shiza, before it leaves. This leads to an investigation into the idea that perhaps the Project Zero is not dead, as they all thought, which then leads to the military discovering that the black painted Victoria is the work of Project Zero, however it was connecting with the unconscious Mizuki, by linking their brainwaves together, and in fact this black of Victoria is being piloted by Mizuki this way. This leads to a scene where this black Victoria is led to the Antarctica by a voice, which leads them to travel beneath the ground where an underground facility producing this army is based, and where she learns this voice is Azuma's, her lover's. However, it's not really him, as Project Zero, like before, absorbed all his memories and will. As such, it is fighting with Azuma, after this, Mizuki awakens, explaining all this to the military and Milky, who has been acting as Min Mira's operator during his time piloting Victoria, before a final battle is set in motion. With help from ravens all over the world like Tiffin, Carl, Zira and Gamos, to name a few, the military and the ravens head out to take out this Antarctica base. The fight is tough however, as within the Phantom Forces are armoured cores which we later learn as Dark Phantoms, which look a lot like 4th Gen 04 Aliyahs, and Lahaya's nexts. However, it's during all this that suddenly these phantoms turn on their own forces, allowing four of the ravens to get deeper into the cave, where another AI-controlled armoured core is waiting for them. However, Minamir and Gamos get by while Levine, another wrangled ranking raven, and Carl fight the AC, which would be named the Crimson Angel. Once inside the base, the two are created by the voice of Azuma, who explains they must destroy the life form of the Phantom, which turns out to be a large flat with cables running all from it. Which leads to the end of our story, where Mizuki, becoming pregnant with the sperm of Azuma, who froze it after they were figured out the baby would not be affected, even if he was one of these AI created pilots, is now living in the countryside in the Villa 13 brought. Minmea and Milky start falling in love and the other ravens go on about becoming heroes and trying to become top rangers in the arenas around the world. As for AI Azuma, 
After the flask was destroyed, he would sink the Felicility to the bottom of the frozen waters of Antarctica, where he would sleep with the base until the human race was ready for these new type of weapons, knowing maybe someday he would see his lover and child. However, to end this report off, I would like to leave you with the artist Alena, who created the thumbnail for this video and the one who scanned all these pages of this novel to share with the world. She will now read the last few pages of the book which have been translated by a translator and not Google. Elena, if you would please, take it away, and thank you for doing this. Milky sent him off, and Minami headed for the garage. The garage was filled with incandescent light. Under the light, Mitsuki stood next to Victoria's head, eyes downcast. What are you doing? Minami approached Mitsuki from under the trailer. Mitsuki opened her eyes, noticing Minami. I was talking to Victoria, like making the day's report. Mitsuki continued. It must be strange. No, not a bit. Minami continued his words as he looked up at Mitsuki. I actually received a message for you while in Antarctica. Upon saying that, Mizuki's face changed color, but she soon returned to her gentle expression and laughed. Really? What kind of message? I love you. Just that. Even though I already knew that, I guess if you don't put it in words, men don't get it, huh? Of course you knew that, but I wanted to put it into words for your unborn child. Is that so? I can tell by the way you've held on to those words, but... Thank you, Minami. With that, those words, I can clearly say them to this child. Mizuki's eyes were wet, but she never shed a tear. Mizuki's strong, Minami thought. She had to be strong. After destroying Phantom Zero at its production site in Antarctica, Asuma, who had led Gamasa Minami, described his own existence as that of a dead person. The experiences and memories of Asuma, which were held by the physical Phantom Zero, was given a virtual personality in the artificial intelligence group, just like all the deceased. But unlike the other virtual personalities, Asuma survived only because he inhabited the production site. The production site itself was the hardware backup for the combat artificial intelligence group, so it was natural that it was disconnected. Asuma, the virtual persona, skillfully guided Phantom Zero to build a Black Victoria, which became a force to confront the battle machines. Then, taking great care not to be noticed by Phantom Zero, he guided Minami and Gamos to the giant flask. In this sense, Asuma was the very antibody of the human species. Gamos, Minami, I want you to tell us to Mizuki and my child. I love you. Minami and Gamos made a firm promise to Asuma. Asuma sank the production base beneath Antarctica and closed the crevasse in the ice sheet to seal off all the data left behind by the artificial intelligence group. It was a tight seal that wouldn't be accessible to mankind for decades to come, but it also meant that the virtual Asuma would live a long life of solitude. That's fine with me. This time, I've protected Mizuki. With that, I can rest easily and finally sleep. Asuma said those final words and let the other two escape. Minami did not tell Mizuki how it happened. He thought it was enough to fulfill the message he was asked to give. Minami left the garage and returned to the main house. Milky was preparing breakfast for tomorrow. Seeing her like that, Minami felt a sense of love. After reporting to her how it went, Minami was satisfied and kept his eyes down. Just then, he felt the soft warmth against his back. Thank you. Milky whispered in his ear. It was so close that he could feel her breath on his neck. He could smell the sweet fragrance of soap. Asuma is alive. Beneath the Antarctic ice sheet, his will is indeed present. He could have regenerated his body the same way Thirteen did. In this way, he would have been able to embrace Mizuki and her unborn child again. However, Asuma did not accept this. That was his choice. The machine standards of the new generation and the super technology derived from them were still too early for today's humanity. A dragon that can control life and death at will must not be released into the world. That was Asuma's decision. But one day, the time may come when mankind will need your cone strength. When that time comes, he would face the challenge with all of his wisdom and strength. But until that time, he continued to sleep. Now, with Mizuki, and after that, the children's time. Mizuki will stand by Victoria's side and dream of the future, hoping that the world in which the child will grow up will be a better world. 
praying that the world will one day be filled with smiles. And here is where the story of Brave New World ends. <laughs>